This screencast covers the material from Module 4, Lesson 22, where we learn about the relationship between the uh, size of the factors and the size of the product. Uh, it's also sometimes called the concept called scaling. Okay, we'll start <coughs> with these problems here. Solve for the unknown. Rewrite each phrase as a multiplication sentence. Circle the scaling factor and put a box around the number of meters. Well, that last part's pretty simple, right? We know that the number of meters obviously is the 8 meters in this statement here. So the scaling factor has to be this 1 half. So we have a multiplication problem here. 1 half times 8 meters. And that equals 1 times 8 over 2. We can do some common factor work here, and we get 4. Next problem, we have 8 times as long as 1 meter. So again, where's our scaling factor? That would be the 8 times. And our number of meters, of course, is 1 half a meter. And this problem is 8 times one half. And of course we know the answer is the same because of the commutative property. That's four meters. Uh, in uh, part two or problem two we have to make a tape diagram representing the two problems above. So we have one half as long as eight meters. So we know the whole is eight meters. We're going to bracket and divide this into two parts. We can put a question mark there, and we know that that is equal to 4. The next one, 8 times as long as 1 half meter. In this case, we don't know the whole. But we know that we have 8 partitions here. Each one of these is 1 half And we could have simplified that using an ellipsis and a count on the bottom. And we can put a question mark up there. All right, let's continue. Now, the crux of this lesson is, is when you take a number and you multiply it by another number, if this other number is greater than 1, then your product is going to be greater than the first factor here. If it's less than 1, then it, this uh, product of this and the fraction will be less than uh, the original factor. Uh, let me just kind of demonstrate that. I might not have been very clear on that. But if we look at this part of the equation, or inequality, we have to end up with something that's less than 7. In order to end up with... Uh, a product that's less than 7, we need to multiply that 7 by something that's less than 1. So any number of uh, pro uh, uh, numerators would work here. We could, uh, as long as it's less than uh, 1, I could use 3 fourths, I could use 1 fourth, I could use 2 fourths. Any of those are potentially correct answers for this. So <clears throat> I'll just put in 3 fourths and that will be less than 7. Now if we look at the next inequality, whatever, whatever this is, it has to be greater than 15. All right, so now I need to multiply 15 by something that's greater than 1. If it's going to be greater than 1, I need to have a denominator that's less than 7. So again, there's several possibilities. I could give 7 sixths, 7 fifths, 7 fourths, 7 thirds, 7 halves. Okay, I could even do 7 units uh, whole. So any of those will be the correct answer and will result in a product that's greater than 15. Now for C, we want it to be equal. And if we are going to multiply 3 by something that equals 3, this has to be the equivalent of 1. In this case, we only have one choice. If the denominator is 5, then the numerator needs to be 5, because 5 fifths is equivalent to 1, just like 4 fourths, 10 tenths, uh, 
the seven sevenths or any number of examples. All right, once again, the concept of multiplying a number by a factor that's greater than one, less than one, or even equal to one. And in this case, we have to multiply our factors by something that's going to make it greater than the original factor. So we need to multiply this by something that makes the product here greater than 3 fourths. And we're going to have to use the same fraction here to make a product greater than 2. And the same fractor here making the uh, product greater than 7 fifths. And we can choose any, any uh, factor larger than 1, whether it be a fraction or a whole number. I'm going to use a fraction this time. So I could say that 5 thirds would work for all of these. Any number of things would work. I, I could use the number 2, right? It would work for all of these. I could use uh, 7 fourths. It would work for all of these. The key concept here is if I multiply a factor by another factor that's greater than 1, I end up with a greater number in the end. The next set of examples is 3 fourths times something is less than 3 fourths. 2 times something has to be less than 2. And 7 fifths times something equals something less than 7 fifths. So in this case, we need to multiply by a factor that's less than 1. And of course, we have any number of choices. I'm just going to put in 1 half, 1 half, and 1 half, and that will work. Again, any number, any fraction that is less than 1. I could have used 3 fourths, 3 fifths, 7 eighths. There's an infinite number of possibilities here. The key concept is I, to make these statements true, I need a second factor that's less than 1. All right, let's go on to uh, number five here. Let's read it. Johnny says multiplication always makes numbers bigger. Well, we know that's not the case. Explain to Johnny why this isn't true. Give one, more than one example to help him understand. <clears throat> okay, I, I don't want to write all this out and belabor it, but the key idea here is if you multiply a number by a factor greater than 1, the product is greater than the original factor. Okay, I kind of wrote that all out, but, and if I multiply by a factor less than 1, the product is less than the original less than the original factor. And if the factor equals 1, then the product, I'm just going to abbreviate that, is equal to the factor. Okay, sloppy handwriting, it's hard to do this quickly uh, with an iPad and stylus, but I think you get the idea. Uh, if nothing else, you can understand what I said, so let's give an example. Well, when it's not true, well, all I have to do is find a number, I'll just pick a number, 10 times 2 thirds equals 10 times 2 over 3, and that equals 20 thirtieths, which is the same as 20 divided by 3, and I get 6 and 2 thirds. We can see that 6 and 2 thirds is less than our original factor of 10.
And again, you could give any number of examples. I'm not going to do another example, but you just pick a number and you multiply it by a factor that's less than 1, you'll end up with a product that's less than 1. Again, there's any number. There's an infinite number of examples. Okay, now we have some scaling. A company uses a sketch to plan an advertisement on the side of a building. The lettering on the sketch is three-fourths of an inch tall. The actual advertisement, the letters must be 34 times as tall. How tall would the letters be on the building? All we have to do is we're going to go to something bigger. The original number is 30 or 3 fourths. We're going to multiply it by 34. And uh, now we're going to combine the uh, two factors into one expression here. And we can do some. Uh, Finding some common factors, uh, 34 and 2 are both divisible by 2. This becomes 2. This becomes 17. So 3 times 17 is 51. So the actual size will be 51 inches. And of course, we should write that in a sentence. Okay, this one goes the other way around. We have the actual size of the... Uh, items in the room and we have to scale it down. So Jason is drawing a floor plan for his bedroom. So we're going to make that floor plan smaller than the bedroom otherwise it's not practical. He's drawing everything with dimensions that are 1 12th of the actual size. His bed measures 6 feet by 3 feet and the room measures 14 feet by 6 feet. What are the dimensions of his bed and his room in the drawing? Okay, so we'll start with the bed. And the length equals 6, and the width equals 3. So to find the dimensions of the uh, uh, drawing, we're going to have 6 times 1 and 12th equals 6 twelfths, and that equals 1 half. So that would be 1 half of a foot. The width, 3 times 1 twelfth equals 3 twelfths equals 1 fourth. And again, that unit is feet. We could convert them to inches too, couldn't we? Now we'll get the room. Our length is 16. And our width is 14. And that's feet. We'll multiply. 16 times 1 twelfth, and we get 16 twelfths, and we can, uh, we can uh, simplify that, right, but they're both divisible by 4, so I get 4 thirds, and now I can change that to a mixed number, is 1 and 1 third feet, and here we have 14 times 1 twelfth equals 14 twelfths. And we again can simplify that because both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by 2. So I get 7 sixths. And my mixed number will be 1 and 1 sixth. And again, that's feet.